Hello everyone, my name is Al Smith and I want to thank you for joining me for this spiritual rosary pilgrimage reflection. I was touched by Father Don Calloway's opening remarks about the champions of the rosary and good Saint Joseph. And like many of you, I think we want more. We want more Jesus. We want more Mary. And we want to understand the power of the rosary even more. And the power is contained in meditating upon the life of Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary. And as Father Calloway spoke of the many popes and blessed and saints and holy men and women of God who spoke about the rosary, I think of how Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen was one of those great champions of the rosary. He instituted the World Mission Rosary, where we pray for the people of all nations, the many continents all around the globe, the green for the continent of Africa, blue for Oceania and Australia, white for Europe, yellow for Asia and the Middle East, and red for the Americas praying for the whole world. But yet, what we need to do is not only pray, but act. And who better to inspire us how to act than the Blessed Virgin Mary and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in 1945, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen penned a beautiful book called The Seven Words of Jesus and Mary. And these seven times that our Blessed Mother spoke will be our point of meditation today. We've been unpackaging the mysteries of the rosary and again the many world-class speakers have been sharing from their hearts and so I want to take an opportunity to share some of Sheen's wisdom and he saw the seven times that our Blessed Mother spoke in sacred scripture as something in a way that mirrored the seven times that our blessed Lord spoke from the cross. And I'll show you this in a few moments. Many of us know the seven last words that our Lord spoke of those, I want to say, beautiful words of a sermon that Archbishop Sheen referred to as the greatest sermon ever told. Those words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen, amen, I say to you, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son, and to the apostle he loved, behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. And Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Again, these great words of a dying man, these words of love. And the Blessed Mother was at the foot of the cross, and she heard those seven words. And with each word, she recalled moments in her life where she could identify with the Lord's words. For example, our Lord's first words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Has a similarity to the first time that Mary spoke, when she was interacting with the angel Gabriel. And she said those words, How could this be, for I know not man? And so, our Lord saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And she's saying, For I know not man. There's a beauty in not knowing. And the Blessed Virgin Mary knew this. Our Lord knew this. And by the grace of God, we will get to know this. In essence, Archbishop Sheen was saying, don't become friendly with sin. Don't get to know sin. How many times we were warned, stay away from that person. Don't enter into that relationship. 
the world is always saying, oh, you'll know what it is to live if you try this or you do that. And how many times we regret. Some of us may say, I wish I never stole my first dollar. I wish I had never had my first drink. I wish I had never met that person. We'd almost wish we could unlearn what we've learned. And yet, our Lord and Our Lady show us the value of ignorance. But there is hope. There is an opportunity for us to unlearn what we've learned. And Archbishop Sheen called it the University of Unlearning. And that university is the confessional, the sacrament of confession. For when we enter the sacrament of confession, we get to have the slate wiped clean. Archbishop Sheen wrote, he says, it's easier for God to write on a blank piece of paper than it is one with tons of scribbles on it. Hopefully during this spiritual rosary pilgrimage, this four week time frame that we have together, you'll take the opportunity to enjoy the sacrament of confession, to have everything wiped clean, to have a fresh new beginning. But yet again, our Lord and our lady tell us the beauty of not knowing, not knowing. The second time our Lord spoke from the cross, he said those words to the good thief, amen, amen, I say to you, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And our Blessed Mother at the foot of the cross recalled then the second time that she spoke in sacred scripture when she said to the angel Gabriel, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. She was giving God her yes. Because the good thief, in a similar way, was also giving God his yes. He began his journey to Calvary, like our Lord, carrying his cross. And he was crucified beside our Lord. And at the beginning of the crucifixion, he joined in on the insults. But when he heard those words, Father, forgive, something happened in his soul. And he rebuked his fellow thief. And he said, do you not fear God? We deserve this punishment. He's innocent. And he turned to the Lord and asked him to remember him. Remember him when he enters into his kingdom. And yet our Lord so beautifully said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And Our Lady was rejoicing because she saw a soul saying yes to God. And her son was saving the good thief. Our Blessed Mother wants to show us, by example, to say yes to God. Give God our yes. And how beautifully you see the good thief and Our Lady saying yes. And of course, they receive great joy, great reward. And so we can learn from the Blessed Virgin Mary and Our Lord about saying yes. The third time that... Archbishop Sheen points to Our Lady and Our Lord saying something very similar is when he says to St. John and the Blessed Virgin Mary, Woman, behold your son, and to the apostle he loved, behold your mother. Our Lady heard those words and she recalled the visitation the time that she went on a five-day journey to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And she brought Christ to her cousin. And she, even though we don't know what she said, I'm sure she said shalom. But she greeted her cousin Elizabeth and brought the Lord to her. And she, of course, said, how is this that the mother of my Lord come to visit me? For when I heard your greeting, the child in my womb left for joy. 
And I think we need to take this to heart. We need to be on a similar mission of bringing Jesus to the world. And our Lord was trying to establish a relationship between a mother and her child, trying to establish in a relationship of charity to have a fellowship together, to share Christ with the world. And so the Blessed Virgin Mary shows us the way. She leads by example, and hopefully with God's grace, we'll be able to follow in her footsteps to bring Christ to the world, just as she brought Christ to her cousin, St. Elizabeth. We continue this spiritual journey through the pen of Archbishop Sheen when he writes about the fourth time that our Lord spoke from the cross and the fourth time that Mary speaks in sacred scripture. Our Lord from the cross says those words, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And many of us know that that is the beginning of the 22nd Psalm which begins with despair and ends with victory. And Our Lady was at the foot of the cross hearing those words. And she knew that psalm very well. And yet she recalled her victory song. For when she was with her cousin Elizabeth, she pronounced her Magnificat, the beautiful victory cry of, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what is our victory cry? For many of us, our victory cry is in the cross that we have on the end of our rosaries. For every day we get to look upon the cross and know that Jesus won a victory for us. And for many of us who pray the divine office, we pray the Magnificat. And we rejoice with Mary. And we need to develop this sense of having a victory cry. And so these two opportunities that Fulton Sheen presents to us of our Lord on the cross and Mary's Magnificat will assist us. We continue with the fifth time that Our Lady spoke and the fifth time our Lord spoke from the cross when he said those beautiful words, I thirst. And Our Lady remembered the time when she thirsted for the Lord and she had lost him for three days. That separation where she and St. Joseph looked for our Lord day and night for she knew what it was to thirst for him. And Jesus in his words of I thirst is saying to us, I thirst for a relationship with you. Hopefully you will thirst for a relationship with me and return love with love. Mary truly thirsted for Christ and she found him three days later. And she said, son, why has this, have you done this to us? Behold, your father and I have sought thee sorrowing. I think we can relate to those words sometimes, many parents out there who have experienced a loss, but yet Our Lady shows us the way. She thirsts for Christ, and she says to us, imitate me in this area. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And our Lord continues to cry, I thirst. Let us return with love to him, our gratitude, and have relationship with him. These, this beautiful connection between our Lord and Our Lady with this fifth word. We now move to the wedding feast of Cana and the two exchanges that Mary gives uh, while she's there, one to our Lord and one to the servants. And so the sixth word that our Lord sp spoke from the cross is, it is finished. And yet, our Lady's sixth time that she spoke in sacred scripture, she says to our Lord, they have no wine. In a way, she was asking him to perform his first miracle. And so 
Of course, our Lord did. And when he gave us these words, it is finished, he was saying to us, look to me. I have done what the Father has asked me. He's asked me to come into the world, to preach, to teach, to lay down my life. And I've completed the mission that God the Father has given me. And I want you to learn from me to work at completing your life, to keep working out your salvation in fear and trembling, to keep doing those good deeds, to work diligently to save your soul. And the Blessed Mother is as interested as our Lord is in that she wants the work to continue. She wants to keep asking Jesus to perform miracles and to ask us to ask him to perform miracles. Mary had great faith in Jesus that he would perform that miracle. And we have to have that same faith to ask Jesus for miracles each and every day. Let us continue to ask him to perform miracles and continue to be inspired by our Lord to complete our life to the point where we will say those words, it is finished, but have truly have completed our life in a good way. These beautiful holy inspirations of our Lord and our Lady uh, that we can learn so much from. The seventh and final word that our Lord and our Lady spoke are similar also, and that our Lord said from the cross, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He was giving God the Father his holy will. He was, in a way, saving the best to last. He had given away his clothing to the executioners, and he had given away his mother and best friend to each other, but he was saving his holy will to the end. And he said those beautiful words, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And yet Our Lady at the wedding feast of Cana said those beautiful words, whatsoever he say, do ye. I think of that even clearer translation that many of us are familiar with, do whatever he tells you. <laughs> I like that better. Do whatever he tells you. And what the Blessed Virgin Mary is, she's asking us to unite our will to the will of the Father, the will of the Son. Of course, she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit, but it's all about uniting our will to God. And she was instructing the servants, do whatever he tells you. I think of those two moments in Scripture where we Hear the voice of God the Father. And he says, This is my beloved Son, on whom my favor rests. And the other time that we hear God's voice is, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Listen to him. So God the Father is asking us to listen to him. And Mary is saying, Do whatever he tells you. What stronger language could you ask? God asking us to listen to him, Mary asking us to do whatever he tells us. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So this is important. Mary shows us to unite our will to God's will. Jesus tells us to unite our wills to God's will. So it's all about our will. And I pray that this reflection has helped to strengthen your holy resolve to follow Christ, to pray your rosaries more fervently, that when you think of the mysteries of the rosary, you will re be reminded of the seven words of Jesus and the seven words of Mary. And Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen wanted us to enjoy our rosaries and enjoy our meditations and so he's given us food for thought. My dear friends, may you continue to enjoy the many blessings of this spiritual rosary pilgrimage. And until next time, may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and bring you peace. God love you.